Hola Tecaji, I am Ignacio Rivera and I am a New Yorker, New Yorican and um, I identify as a black Boricua Taino and um, within that as well I identify as transgender, um, genderqueer, gender fluid. I always say my story is uh, interesting in that um, I was raised heterosexual, I was bisexual for about a month, then I was a lesbian, then a dyke, then queer, and then trans and queer. So currently I identify as trans and queer, and under that trans umbrella for me is like gender queer, gender non-conforming, gender fluid, um, and then culturally I identify as two-spirit. So. Um, so that journey has been a beautiful journey for me. Like it's been amazing, and um, I don't know where I'll be in five years. So for me, I believe that our sexual orientation and our gender is not set in stone. That it it can be fluid. For some people, they find that place that fits, and it's been fantastic. They got it, and they're happy. And for others like me, I have been flowing that wave, and. Um, and I'm excited to see where I'm going to go next. Um, I am a survivor of sexual abuse and incest um, and um, I suffered a lot from that as a young person um, struggling uh, and uh, kind of came out of the, I was pushed out of the closet as a lesbian when I was young um, after having my daughter Amanda Linet who is now 24 years old, uh, had her when I was 18 and um, really just wasn't connected to who I was and my body and how I, could, uh, how I interacted sexually or intimately with other people. So it kind of began there. It kind of began with um, uh, really assessing who I was and being a lesbian right now, which I, up until that point, I never even knew that lesbians existed. I knew about gay men. I had gay men all over my life, but never any women who loved women. So. Um, so I went to therapy for about five years, um, intense, and it saved my life. And that is definitely not the journey that everybody takes because some people don't want therapy and don't need it and are, you know, find their own ways to heal. But I, I needed it and it helped me. So through that, I learned about my, um, the way in which I, um, had relationships with people, right? I used my sex to get them because that's how I got uh, approval from my abuser, like if I did something right. Mm -hmm. So that's when things were good. And so that's what I did, I used my body. I used my body to make someone love me, to make them stay and not leave. And I started learning my patterns. I started learning all these things about myself and um, realized that I needed to change them. I needed to have healthier relationships. I needed to um, speak openly about what I wanted. So. Uh, um, a lot of the work that I do now really has a lot to do with um, consent, negotiation, boundary setting, um, asking for what we want. And you know, all really, I started going to college out of boredom because the town I lived in was pretty boring. So <laughs> I went and I loved it. It was a different experience than high school uh, and middle school. Uh, and went. Uh, for two years, got my associates and said, you know, I think I'll go again. And I went for my bachelor's and then I went for my master's. And, um, and that whole time, it was probably the most difficult time in my life because I was going to school full time, raising my daughter and working three jobs. Um, and I did that for six years straight so that I can get my degree. Um, and all in that, I was organizing, I was writing a lot. Um, a lot of the writing that I did was um, angry poetry, and it was angry poetry about my abuse. Um, and then I got introduced to, you know, open mic poetry nights. And one day I just got up and started reading, and a lot of people connected to what I had to say. And that energy, that exchange with people, was amazing. I never felt something like that, and I felt I didn't feel alone. I felt like um, I was being heard. So I started writing more and doing more poetry slams. Um, and that's how my poetry and writing developed uh, while my organizing um, was happening. And while I was in that town, I actually organized the very first um, uh, LGBT Pride March that still happens to this day, which was 
really combated by a lot of um, uh, religious folks who felt that it was horrible and need to be a gender queer, gender fluid person. Uh, for me, it feels so happy. And when I'm around other people who feel the same way or accept me, it's just a, a beautiful thing. Um, but um, when it comes to like uh, connecting with other people or having relationships with other people, it becomes a complex issue because um, then what are you and what does that make me? You know, so you're gonna be femme one day and masculine another day. So like that's not what I signed up for. You know, like some people want what they want. It's like. They want to be able to describe or understand who the person that they're with is, you know. So it can be a little complicated for folks, um, and sometimes a little lonely because of it. But I, I feel like um, I decided a long time ago that I was not going to compromise my happiness in terms of what I want and what I feel, you know.